Hi, I'm Luke Nguyen. Now, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Australia and Vietnam's diplomatic relations, I'll be embarking on the culinary journey through Vietnam. I'll be meeting up with inspiring Australians, eating delicious regional Vietnamese foods, and I'll also be cooking with some premium Australian produce. Now, to start my journey, I'm in the capital of Vietnam, the ever so charming Hanoi. I'm in the old town of Hanoi in search for the best jack gar dish of this local area. Now, all these back streets here sits this wonderful old building, colonial French building. It's called Jaka Tan Long. Now, it's so popular here, even the Michelin Guide has been here as well. Jaka Tan Long is over 130 years old. The most signature dish in Hanoi. So when you're here, you must try it. <laughs> I can smell the dill and all the aroma of this fish dish already. Ooh, tell me what. I love how you threw all of it in. Spring onion, dill. Dill, dill. The, the smells that are coming out of this pan into this room. Incredible. So vermicelli noodles, so fluffy. Yeah. Mm. The rice noodles. Ooh. Oh, lovely. Okay, so. All right. Yeah. And all the color of the turmeric, langos go through the noodles. Amazing, amazing. I mean, look at this as a combination. You have all the vermicelli noodles, all the flavour from the fish dripping and absorbed into the noodle, all the fresh herbs, yes. and then the texture yes. of the peanuts as well. Oh my goodness. I'm not going to eat this all at once, but just... It's such a perfect combination yes. of all the turmeric, galango, garlic, yeah. fish sauce, and then this shrimp face over the top. Incredible. Yes. <laughs> so good. Thank you so much for showing me your family. Yes. Jaka and Lom. Yes. One bite is a good idea. Buddy, Hi. it's a long time. So good to How see you. How are you? Oh, How are you? I'm great. Are you well? Good to see you. How's it? How's this? The symbol of Hanoi. Stunning. It's you know? beautiful. The weather is great too. It's calm, serene. Exactly. So happy to see you again. Yeah. Thank you. Same here. <clears throat> Such a great honor to be here with you in Hanoi. Absolutely. <laughs> now, Jimmy, Koto stands for No One Teach One, which That's is incredible. Right. Yeah. Um, tell us the journey in how Koto was born. Uh, Koto's journey began in 1996 when I uh, came to Vietnam right. uh, on a work assignment, um, a chance meeting with street kids that ultimately changed my life. I uh, decided to want to become the change I wanted to see in the world. Came back to Vietnam three months later, uh, started a journey, had $200 in my pocket and that, that passion to wanting to make a difference. Uh, but the journey has been always give a man a fish today and he'll, show, and he'll eat them today and show them how to fish. So the first three years, is about giving them fish everywhere. I see street kids yep. in this in this region, uh, and Vietnam, as you can imagine, look, you know, uh, 
996 was still considered a third world country, 80% live under a dollar a day, and there was poverty everywhere, so uh, there was a lot of street kids to help. Um, and then in 1996, uh, sorry, 1999, a whole bunch of street kids told me that they wanted more, they needed a job, uh, and Koto came, uh, was born out of that. Uh, wanting to create them a family, yeah. but also a pathway and a future. Such an incredible story. Yeah. So what does Koto do today? Vietnam very first social enterprise, yeah. so there's over 50,000 social enterprises now after 25 years of operation. 50,000? 50,000, so it's amazing. So it's, a, it's another way of helping, not charity, right. but investment. Uh, and that's how they, they see it. Uh, number two, we are uh, a two-year program based on the Australian curriculum, uh, TAFE. Uh, which is Box Hill Institute in Melbourne. Box Hill curriculum, that's so, amazing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So commercial cookery and yeah. front of house. Right. Um, and so we do a life skills English training with Apollo here as well. And then at the end of two years, we place them from basically from zero to hero, which is basically in a five-star hotel and all that. But the best thing about the program, Luke, is we give them a pathway. So 10% uh, of our students are now working overseas, yep. get scholarship like RMIT, uh, doing university, yep. some are doing masters. Uh, some has become, you know, head chefs at their own businesses, and we continue to give them that support and a pathway into leadership. Truly inspiring. Thank Truly you. inspiring. Now, Jimmy, after 25 years of operations, yeah. what are the milestones of COVID? Well, we have over um, so 2,000 kids now, or graduates, uh, now in the hospitality industry. Yeah. Uh, it's so funny, they made, they made a, a joke that, you know, there's so many of us and so many of the other major hotels and restaurants, they call us the Code of Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys are. Uh, right. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the great thing is about this, this pathway and this, this network that support each other. So the community grows as well, the hospitality and to leadership. Um, we uh, create an ecosystem, so we work with the Australian government okay. uh, on the, called the Her Turn Project, which yes. is helping girls uh, and I think minorities to have a voice and amplify their voice and also to give them a platform and uh, equal opportunity. Uh, so we've been doing that for seven years now. Yeah. Uh, we also create a food rescue program and uh, so based on the Us Harvest model in Australia. So we're doing it here called Viet Harvest and uh, so our major partners like Vietnam Airlines and, and, and uh, you know IHG and yeah. all that kind of stuff to rescue food. So Koto um, collects the food yeah. Oh, rescues the Sur food. Surplus food. Yes, yeah, surplus uh, food. Yep. And do you bring it back to the Koda kitchens? We then, uh, the first one is we work over with 10 charities now, yeah. both in Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi, okay. and we give that to the, the nourish uh, the youth. Yeah. Uh, the next phase is we, uh, like uh, uh, us harvest, we bring it back to the kitchen and then convert them to gourmet uh, food and nourish the country. Amazing. For wow. the underserved. Yeah. So much respect for, for you and Thank your you. entire Koto team. Thank you. Always welcome. Thank you, Jimmy. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much. When did you start at uh, Koto? I started Koto in 2011, right after I you know, finished high school. So it's, for me, it's a great, great, great opportunity. I never thought I would become a chef, to be honest with you. But then when I know about Koto, and then when I learned about Koto to be a chef, and after that, I feel, you know, I think it's my destiny, you know, it's my future. Sure. It's not only about cooking in the kitchen, but also, you know, like bring the service to the customer, you know, give them the, the, the knowledge about Vietnamese squeezing. And also the most important is, I think what, we, what I receive from Koto is also a time for me to, you know, give away, but not just only for the people who study here, but also for people, you know, in the social team. Sure. And you're, you're such a great inspiration to all the current uh, Koto and Herton 
that's for our students, right? To see where you are and you're working where now at... Uh... I'm working at Kamala Hanoi. He's not your typical, you know, in Australia, you know, your typical uh, chef kind of feature and look and all that. He's, he's a kind of a small man yeah. with a gigantic heart. Yes. And I think that what sets him apart is like everything he cooks, everything he said, he said he did with passion. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think in the industry is to have that, that taking him so far to where he is today. Yeah. Capella Hotel is, like, is an incredible, incredible. Um, yeah. address. And Jimmy, what, what keeps you going after 25 years? Yeah. What keeps you just you know, driving and you know getting all more students and bringing yeah. their you know their success in their careers. The uh, the purpose for for you know a lot of people that spend their whole life looking for purpose. I found out at a very young age. I was 24 years old. I found a purpose that uh, I'm very passionate about. And for me, every day when you wake up, you go to work. There's no other job in the world. You go to uh, to work. And you see a whole bunch of small, a sea of smiling faces, mm. and say good morning to you. And your translation to that is, "Thank you for my future." And that's the wow. way is is um, you know. So. I love that. Thank you for my future. And you all have a bright future ahead. Congratulations, everyone. Absolutely. And lovely to meet you all. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Twenty five years of Koto. Oh, Please, guys. Cheers, everyone. Thank you, Jimmy for sharing such an incredible and touching story. Now, it's time to say goodbye to Koto as I continue my culinary adventure in Hanoi and follow Chef Kong to his workplace kitchen. Stay tuned and join me for my upcoming story in part two of Hanoi. <laughs>